When I got the job here in, in 2011, um, we had some pretty special kids, and one of them was his son, Orrin, um, on the football team. Um, Orrin has been a, a starting safety slash linebacker at uh, Vanderbilt for the last three years. Um, he may he can give you more information about Orrin, but Orrin is one of the most um, respected players in all of NCAA football. their goals. Um, they set their goals and what we do is we provide the order and the steps for them to achieve their goals and that's came up with, uh, that's why um, the company was named uh, Order My Steps. Um, one of the things um, I wanted to, to highlight for you um, with regards to parents and this recruiting process is uh, one of the things that we started with was you need to think about as parents, um, I'm sure you're thinking about a retirement plan. My wife and I and, and my 60 or so clients, we never thought of thinking of a child or our child or children, <laughs> both our children are on uh, uh, athletic scholarships as part of our retirement plan. Um, any parent here, wouldn't you like to retire earlier? Okay, if you, you only get one chance to do this recruiting process. There are no do-overs. So what you want to do is you want to pour your time. So one of the things you need to look at is, one of the things is um, we have what we call fees and cost. Um, we need to, as parents and as, as student athletes, we need to change your mindset. We need to look at that bet that costs $250 as an investment. The time that you spend with your children, you need to look at that as an investment. What you put into your child will definitely determine the outcome and, and how far they go in the process. Uh, so I'm, I'm trying to not repeat what, what was already said. So I'm going to um, kind of kind of move around to, um, one, I want to make sure everyone has, a, has the, um, I'm going to talk to the uh, phases, tips, and tools. So um, as an outline, uh, uh, hopefully you have, have that. There's a uh, couple more over that. here. Does anybody not have one? So um, as an outline, what we're going to talk about is uh, initial consultation. Um, which is information and gathering. Uh, the next is marketing of talent. And these are the things that, that we go through with our, with our clients. I'm giving you the actual steps here. Um, of course, each one of these bullets, 2.1, they have 16 sub bullets. And, but that takes time. Um, number three would be client player skills um, development. The uh, number four is high school closeout. And then five, is college job search, purchase home, is six in estate plan. And I know you're asking, why do you have purchase homes and in, in estate plan? Well, what OMS does is you are a client for life. We are there to help you throughout the rest of your tenure. We don't just get you to college. We help you with resume review, job placement. Um, this earlier, later on this week, I'm, I'm going to be putting some ads out um, uh, for for my clients, and then eventually they go on to social media and so on and so forth. If I can't fill the position, um, so we're going to go go back here. We're going to start with an initial consultation. Um, as you can see, you have assessment, um, academic, and athletic. Notice the order that that's in there, assessment. It says academic and then athletic. It goes back to you, the student athlete, you're first a student. If 
if you don't do the student part, you will not get an opportunity to do the athletic part. So we at OMS, we focus on the ac academics. Coach P, uh, he focuses on the athleticism. We work together hand in hand. Um, he takes care of them on the field. I try to help and work with them on, on these steps so they can get to the next level. Um, I have coached, and but I, I feel that right now um, we have enough coaches, but I don't think we have enough mentors. And, and that's basically what we do. Um, so when you talk about goal settings, um, the client sets the goal setting, sets your goals. We give you individual steps. And what you need is an accountability part. Um, and that's what we do for our clients. And that's what you need to do in your household. This whole recruiting process is a family uh, tax. And sometimes it's going to divide families um, where one parent is going with one child. But you, what you have to do is you have to work together and make sure that you get the children um, what they desire. Um, what we look at now is, um, we call it um, a profile, um, profile preparation, which is basically a resume. Um, in your early stages, middle school, high school, you, the, you need to, the student needs to document what they're doing. They need to document that they're, they're in the National Honor Society. They need to document that they're in clubs, and so on and so forth. Um, what we're going we're gonna to move on now uh, to the marketing of talent. What you look at, what we're looking at here is, is um, I'm going to skip down to like coursework. I wanted to focus on that. Um, as far as advice, that comes from years of experience. That, uh, that's 2.1. When you look at coursework, um, we talked about earlier. They talked about um, core. We had a, an ex, ex, um, an ex, we had a, a problem with one of our clients where she wanted to take uh, computer AP computer science and. Uh, her school would not accept that as a core class. So you really need to plan your classes out. We have planned that out since ninth grade, and, th and that's what you have to do with, um, parents need to do with your child. You need to put all your classes um, written out from ninth grade um, all the way to 12th grade. But how do you do that? Well, technically, it shouldn't be from ninth grade to 12th grade. What you want to do is have your child Go research their top school and find out what the entrance requirements are. Then you want to work from the entrance requirements as a freshman and work backwards. 12th grade, 11th, 10th, and 9th. Now the reason you want to do those things is because different schools may have different requirements. Um, West Virginia may say you need three years of foreign language consecutive. Well, you can't do that if you start out taking a foreign language in the 10th grade, you won't get three years. So you may as well take West Virginia off your list. You won't be able to go there. So what you want to do, you want to have five schools. And I call that focus on the five. And you need to do your research, your due diligence, and focus on those five and, and have, have your student go do the research. Um, the more you have the students do the research, the more involved they will be. And then the more in, in tune they will be when they start seeing, seeing coaches and being able to talk about what they know about the school. What coach wouldn't like you telling them more about the school than they know? You need to do your research. Um, and and that, that steps right into 2.3 is the research and contacts um, and resources. When I talk about resources, that's when you need to look at your transcript office. Um, you need to look at your counselors. How many, show of hands, how many parents know the name of that counselor, your child's counselor? All right, that's, that's a pretty, and I know, I know somebody is, is sticking their hands out because they don't want to see that their hand is down. But you, this is a team, and, and, and you have to use resources. Um, another thing as far as resources, you should always try to use um, someone, uh, talk to someone, and interview someone that's where you want to be. You want to talk to someone that went to the Syracuse camp if you, if you want to be at Syracuse. Um, so that's, that's what I mean by using your resources. Um, we'll move on to email preparation. Um, one of the things, um, this is a, a two uh, front and back. So most of, of these tools that we have here, most of these phases, they come with a tool. So at, um, when we ran
recommend is you, you have to have what I call is a, a base email. You need to come up with a, uh, a master email. And that's how you start getting your email preparation. Um, as far as unique identifiers, um, I talked about it earlier, uh, maybe National Honor Society. These things you need to write down so that you are not um, average or above average or, or both. Okay, you, you have to stand out and you have to, you have to document it. Uh, let's see, you. Next is uh, communicate games. Um, this is, we're starting the, the, uh, the spring, but this is applicable to every season. Before the season starts, you should be sending your coach emails and inviting them to your games. That, that should be, um, whether it's high school games or, or travel, you never know whether a coach is coming or not. But I guarantee you, they will not come if you don't invite them. Uh, an email doesn't cost you anything. And, and my approach is that you should, you should be just blanketing the, the, the college, um, uh, all the colleges, until you start getting offers and you can start narrowing them. You, you, your list should be big. Um, I always say focus on the five. But you should, you should have at least, uh, I mean, uh, at least probably 15, 20 schools on your list. As you, con as you continue the recruiting process from ninth grade all the way through, you can decrease that and start focusing on, hopefully, and you should make sure that you incorporate your school into your potential, <laughs> I'm sorry, your academics or your major into your, your school. Um, some of the questions that we asked, we visited over 50 schools or so, um, probably 20 or 30 with just, just my children. And um, one of the things is um, when you're on a visit, you need to make sure that as a, as a child, the student athlete needs to be more proactive. You need to ask questions. So what, what you want to do is the student athlete should have like two or three questions that they always ask. One of the questions that, that we have our clients ask when they're with the team is like, what's your GPA? What's the team GPA? The other thing you want to ask is, what are, your, what are the majors of the players? We went to one school where, um, uh, let's see, uh, my, client asked, uh, my client asked that question. And there were sophomores on, on the college team, on, the, on this college team, that had not even declared their major. OK, so a flag goes off. They might be coming to that school to do what? Athletics. They, they, they're going to get there, and then they'll figure out what major they, they're going to focus on. Or they'll let the school sway them or, or direct them on what majors they should take to, to be able to be an athlete and get through the process. Um, how are we doing with time? All right. So, um, so we'll, we'll move on. Um, so your online presence. As, as far as uh, online, the, the main thing that you need to do is um, you have to put your videos up on YouTube. Um, you can take these um, videos and push them on Facebook and, and push them on Twitter. But for longevity and to get better visibility, you really need to save them up on YouTube and then share it from there. because. YouTube's um, platform is, is really set up so that coaches can go there and they can find you and they can search. You, you can't, they don't want to go through your, your, your social media looking at stuff where you just, you know, videoed or whatever. For better visibility, you really need to use uh, YouTube. Um, as far as social media monitoring, um, I always use, a, use this example. Um, one of my clients, um, around 7.30 in the morning, um, he posted that he was getting ready to attend a invitation-only camp. So I'm on the way to work, and I, I'm, I'm following him, and I also have it set up so that when, he, when they post, I see it. So I, I see that, and I'm like, so I text him. And I said, you need to take that down. And he, and he was like, well, and I said, uh, you know, kind of like, nope, don't ask questions right now, get it down. Invitation-only. That means the coach only wanted certain people to come to these to this camp. So you, you have to be real careful. Uh, how can that coach trust you if you're getting out information? That that coach can get in in some hot water.